Hey y'all, it's Rusty. Um, um, there's a lot. There's only one review on the on YouTube right now of uh, the Cobia uh, 201 center console. Um, so I figured I'd give uh, owner's review. We've had the boat now for about two months. Um, kind of give you a truthful review of what we like, what we don't like about the boat. Take you through some of the features, and uh, we'll start. We'll start at the bow here. We've got a nice size uh, anchor locker up here, and it latches down. Um, it does twist and lock, so. It doesn't bump around a lot. It's actually nice and quiet. Um, as far as the cleats, I like we like the fact that it's pop-up cleats uh, all the way around the boat. And if you notice on the front there, our front navigation, our bow navigation light, um, the manufacturer review, they actually have two lights. They have one on each side. And for some reason, they decided to to put this this bow line, this bow. Um, navigation light up front. We don't, I really don't like it because if you're anchoring and tying off, I mean your your um, anchor line kind of gets caught on that on that light. Um, anyway, uh, as we move down, we've got the about we've got all the bow cushions out right now. Um, these snaps right here, I'll go into detail about. Um, we've had to replace the backing strap or the backing snaps on on some of our cushions are already coming off already. Um, so that was pretty low quality. Um, basically, we one time we we had the cushions in one time, pulled it out one time, and snaps coming off already. Okay, so this is one of the things that um, kind of is disappointing. The snaps that that come on these cushions from Cobia are pretty flimsy. Um, we've had to replace them because they come off really easy. And you know, as you can see, there's no backing or anything on them really really loose so our solution to the problem was that we took the cushion we took this one cushion and we had we had them redo them and as you can see there's like a little plastic backing that's on that it's a lot more substantial there's not a lot of rattle in this thing and it's, if you look at this one it rattles a lot um, they come right off so for eight dollars what you can do well eight dollars for this cushion we're gonna have the rest of the cushions done eventually um, they took and they replaced, you know, all of the snaps on that. So that would be something to consider. Um, you have your lockable, you have lockable storage and fish box here. This removes as well, um, so you can walk straight up to the to the front of the boat if you want. And then we've also got. Another box over here, insulated as well. Now this right here, this can be an ice chest or it can be an aerator. Um, here's the deal. This snap right here, we within the first week, this snap had already broken off. So they've got a block kit that they put in. That, that repaired that. Um, that was really poor quality. Um, the dealership did come out and repair it for us. Um, we didn't purchase a trailer with the boat, so they had to come to the marina to do it. Um, got nice upholstery here. The T-top, uh, we've got powder-coated T-top. Um, it comes with the, with the canvas. Um, the canvas seems to be pretty durable, and then we added our tea bag there. You do have a place for operators on each side, which we don't have. Um, and the, the windshield is uh, like a plexiglass. Um, if you look down, you can see it comes with four speakers, four marine speakers. They're okay, but I have a feeling we're going to be replacing them. Um, they're probably not the best quality. They sound okay. Here's the console. We really like the console. Um, it's, got a little, it's got a little strap right there so you can strap around to hold it open. It's kind of messy. It's got a pump out um, porta potty down there. And also, if you look at our little window over there, the window opens as well. Then you've got your wastewater pump out. This this boat does have the optional um, fresh and raw water wash down. This is removable. Um, a place for fishing rods. And also cup holders there. This flips out and storage underneath. Like this seat, if we had to do it over again, I wouldn't get this seat. Um, the 
thing, it, it always wants to come open for some reason. It doesn't stay latched for very long, uh, especially if you're hitting a lot of wake and everything. It's wanting to come open on you. Um, as far as the actual dash, we got the Garmin 741. Um, it comes with the Yamaha 6YC, I believe it is. And then we added the other equipment. It comes with Marine Radio. Trim tabs. Um, a lot of people will tell you you don't need trim tabs on a 20 foot boat. Uh, that is completely false for this boat. This boat, uh, we had two rather large individuals in it a couple of weeks ago, and these trim tabs were lifesavers. Um, the boat lists a lot, you know, when you put a little bit of weight on it. I mean, two people, it's fine. Four people, it's okay. I, you know, the capacity is eight people or 1,600 pounds. I don't think you'd get a, I don't think you could really ride eight people on here comfortably. Um, especially not fish eight people on here. Um, this is the upgraded um, steering wheel. It is till you got your power knob there. Um, you got all your um, toggle switches on the left hand side. We have a storage down there as well. We've got rod holders on each side and there are L there's LED lights underneath there so at night it lights up pretty good. Alright, so this is pretty much the cockpit of the night, and that's the gun wall. What really led us what really helped us make the decision with this boat was the walk-through transom. That and the fact that the stern seating folds up. Um, there's also access to your dual batteries down here and a power manager. There's also a um, lighted live well right here and it is circulating. But as you notice, this is one of the things we don't like. This boat's supposed to be all stainless. And we're already starting to get some rust in some spots. On the rub rail, we've got a couple of rust spots as well. So, we're kind of going to wait and um, wait a couple months and, you know, either get in touch with Kobe or whatever. Um, the basics of the boat, the boat's kind of a pretty heavy boat, it's a wet running boat. A lot of the boat's in the water when it runs, which, you know, it, I think it helps improve the ride. Um, it's a wide boat, the beam on the boat's 8.6, eight, eight, um, the draft on the boat is 18 inches. It's got 60 gallon fuel capacity. Um, the weight of the boat, full with 60, you know, 60 gallons of fuel, um, two passengers, engine and everything, you're probably right at 4,100, 4,200 pounds. Um, but it's a comfortable boat. So kind of why we decided to go with the, with the Cobia is we compared it to the um, Sea Fox, um, we compared it to Nautic Star, and we compared it to a Sea Chaser. Um, as compared to the Sea Fox, there's a lot more freeboard on this boat than there is on the Sea Fox. And it's a wider boat. It just feels, it feels larger than a 20-foot boat. We, you know, we were taking out a 217, which is the next size up from this boat. And honestly, there's not a whole lot of difference between the 217 and this one. Um, you get a little bit more bow room, but not, you know, not, not that much. So, I mean, it wasn't that big a deal. Another thing, before I forget about it, this boat does not have, does not come with an owner's manual. And why? I don't know. Um, because you figure if you buy a brand new boat, that you should at least get an owner's manual. It doesn't exist. I uh, called the manufacturer. They never called me back. Called the dealership. Dealership said they don't make a, they don't have a, uh, um, an owner's manual for this boat. They said pull it up online and you know you can get one for the 217, which is pretty much the same boat. But anyway, it's just one of those little things. Um, as far as the delivery of the boat, we bought the boat from Gulf Shores Power Sports. Um, we don't trailer the boat, we keep it at Barber Marina, so we did a trailer delete on it. As far as the delivery of the boat, you know, even though we've got prior experience on boats, um, the, the sea trial was nothing. Basically, it's fueled up and off. There's some little things that, that Gulf Shores Power Sports could have done better. Um, the boat, 
when they detailed it or what they left wax all over the boat so I mean it took me you know quite a few hours just to kind of get the wax off um, as far as Keith, Keith was our salesman he's pretty cool um, he was pretty knowledgeable um, and they actually had this boat and they didn't know that they had it so we kind of, we kind of lucked out that's how they wound up with it uh, so we're gonna do more videos in the future um, as far as an overall boat this is, you know, it's an offshore boat, but I prob probably won't be taking this boat more than, you know, 10, 12 miles offshore. Um, this thing does, you know, it, the fuel consumption is pretty high on it, I think. Uh, wide open throttle at like 6,000 RPMs. I think you're at 16 gallons per hour. I mean, if you run wide open for, you know, four hours, do the math, I mean, you're, you're probably going to be out of fuel or have to refuel. Um, but overall, I mean, it's, it's a decent boat. Um, it's probably a good trade-off between a cruising boat and fishing boat. I wouldn't consider this a true fishing boat. Like I said, you're only going to go 10 miles off. It's not, it probably wouldn't be a good bay boat either because it drafts a little bit. It's a heavy boat. So anyway, we'll do, uh, we'll do more videos in the future. Um, if there's any comments or questions or whatever, uh, just post and I'll get back in touch with you, especially if you're considering purchasing one because I can kind of give you some ins and outs and things that I learned. Um, so, all right. Well, thanks.